Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It has turned a good deal colder in recent days. In fact, parts of the south have seen their first snow of the winter. So are the wintry conditions here to stay? Well, before I get on with the forecast, let me just say that there is a huge amount of uncertainty about how things will play out through the next two weeks. The potential, though, is there for more wintry weather. So, without further ado, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 9th of January. It's a quiet and chilly picture to start off with. High pressure there centre just to the north, an easterly flow on its southern flank, mostly dry. The snow showers which we had have moved away now. As I run the animation, what we see is Slightly less cold air filters down across the UK, so showers turn back to rain rather than snow. But then, as we head through the weekend, quite a significant change begins to take place because the high pressure starts migrating westwards and northwards towards Greenland, and very cold air from the Arctic begins sweeping southwards. And as I run this through to its conclusion, what we see is cold air marches down across the north, makes its way into central areas, and into the south for a time. But look at this at the very end. The GFS model, which this sequence is based on, develops this deep area of low pressure to the southwest. Weather fronts associated with it begin to move up across the southern part of Britain. They bring rain and snow, potentially heavy outbreaks of rain and snow with milder air getting back into the southwest and maybe other parts of southern England for a time. Huge uncertainty, though, at this range. I'm going to look at it in a little bit more detail later to compare the different computer models because they are handling this phase of the forecast period significantly differently. Here's the air temperature sequence associated with the same GFS run, the high pressure air uh, centre just to the north to start off with, cold air particularly over the south, but as I run it what we see is upper air temperatures, so at about 1500 metres, warm up for a time or at least become less cold but then later on we see that blue arctic air marching southwards of up by the very end here the milder air from the southwest is pushing there across up into southern parts of britain so there's a lot taking place and as i say the details later on are up for grabs here are some temperature charts down at the ground level associated with the same model run so maximums on wednesday Chilly, not particularly cold, four, five, sixes, maybe in southern and central regions, not that different as you head further north. Then moving forwards to Friday, temperatures have trended upwards a little bit there, especially in southern and central regions. Seven Celsius in eastern England is being forecast, so not too far off the norm. So I'd say at this point, it's generally close to or slightly below the average. The other thing to note is that cloud amounts will be varying, so the risk of night frosts varies accordingly. Where clear spells form, temperatures will rapidly dip and maybe uh, fall several degrees below freezing point. So frost still an issue, even though upper air temperatures are rising through the first few days. But as I say, they will be patchy. This shows forecast minimums on Saturday morning. It's suggesting quite a widespread frost but as I say, much will depend on the extent of cloud cover. Moving forwards to Tuesday, back to looking at maximum temperatures. As I say by this point though, it's all up for grabs. It's a cold or very cold picture across most of the UK, but look how close that mild air is. It's pushing up into the southwest, into Devon and Cornwall at this point. And then for beyond this, in the days which follow, that mild air, does make further inroads. I'm not going to show that because there's so, so much uncertainty about how this will play out. Here's the Mogreps G ensemble plot for London, which is also showing temperatures down at ground level. All the runs there, each line represents an individual run within an ensemble, are very closely uh, to pack together there through the first few days. But from around the 13th of January, the scatter begins to increase, and that's showing different outcomes from the different individual runs within the ensemble model. More scatter, more uncertainty about just how cold it will be from around the 13th onwards as that Arctic air moves down across the south and there's a potential for 
low pressure as well to be pushing up from the uh, southwest. But if we jump up to Leeds, what we see through the same period is that there is less scatter, so less chance for mild air um, affecting central and northern parts of the UK than there is the south. And that's often the case when cold spells like this develop because the, they are being driven by high pressure to the west or north, west of the UK, the Arctic air is moving southwards. Of course, it's, if it's going to reach the south of Britain, it's got to also reach central and northern regions. So a good deal of uncertainty. Here are the snow forecasts from the uh, Morgrebs G model and the GEFS model. So both ensembles, they are valid for Tuesday the 16th of January. I wanted to show these because not many are pointing towards snow in the south at this time. What that suggests is that the GFS operational run, which I showed in the animation, could well be overdoing the development of that area of low pressure. It may well just slip away or stay further to the south or southwest of the UK with more of the uh, country being covered by that cold Arctic air. So I think the chance of the heavy rain, sleet and snow in southern and central regions towards the end of the first week, which the animation showed is rather low, but it's certainly not out of the question. So how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 16th. There's an area of low pressure, which I've been discussing. It's quite a deep feature, well developed on this, with the mild air beginning to push into the south. The Canadian model actually shows something quite similar. You can see the blue shading there over north and the east of Britain, central areas too, but the greens and oranges there beginning to move up from the south. But it's really the North American models versus the European ones because the German icon has cold air covering the UK really at this point, the low pressure just a little bit further southwest. The European ECM model, a similar story, even more uh, so because the low pressure here is further southwest and it's a cold northerly flow covering all parts of the UK. Finally, the UK Met Office. Uh, global model, it also has the UK completely under the blue shading, which indicates cold upper level air. There is a little feature here, small area of low pressure just to the west of Ireland that may come into play in the days which follow. It may not. It's all academic really at this range. So I think as we go into the second week, it's most likely to be cold or very cold, especially in central and northern areas more uncertainty about what things will be looking like in the south. Here is the GEFS uh, plot for London. Of course, at this range, it's really entirely about the ensemble data just to get the idea of the direction of travel, trends and probabilities. What this is pointing towards, first of all, is that the operational run, which develops an area of low pressure, is something of an outlier here. It's, it's a thick green line. It's, it's showing air temperatures at 1500 meters, approximately rising well above the 30 year average for a short time before they drop away there. Interestingly though, the thick blue line, which is the control run in the ensemble, it shows something very similar happening. So I wouldn't be dismissive of that scenario. Now, most of the other runs in the ensemble though are keeping colder conditions through that early part of the second week in the south. So they probably develop the area of low pressure less and we've got a cleaner push down from the north. But through the second week, regardless of what happens early on, the trend which this is shown is for temperatures to be rising. Also, if you look at the bottom part of the plot here, there are lots of spikes there, quite a significant number which are pointing towards precipitation. Now, of course, they could be rain or they could be snow, but the snow row across the bottom there helps identify the likelihood of the, uh, of the latter being true. And the values are not really very high. It's sevens or eights early on, and they are dropping as we head towards the end of week two. So the trend here would seem to be for cold conditions early on, Although the operational run and the control, and the control run are both saying something otherwise, but most of the ensemble runs are going for cold. Later, temperatures are recovering and 
the chance of snow here is decreasing. The two meter temperature data tables for London follow a similar trend. Early on, there's lots of dark green. Those forecast maximums are between one and five Celsius, so it's cold. I think it's not, not exceptionally cold. It's, most of the runs here are not going for ice days. There is a little bit of blue. Those are ones which are, so when temperatures are staying at all below naught Celsius through the days. But the trend there is clearly an upwards one if this is to be believed. The nighttime lows, frosts widespread. There is plenty of blue there, but later on, the amount of it starts to decrease as well. Up to Manchester, it's a very, very similar pattern here. The control run and the operational run both bring in milder air. So even though we're further north here, and as I was saying, the chance of a milder air reaching this part of the country is lower. The, uh, in the case of the GFS and the control run and the GEFS, they do actually get the milder air this far north for a short time. Along the bottom, lots of spikes. The snow row values are higher though earlier on, quite a lot higher there into double figures, so 15 or 16, I think, early in the second week, although they decline as well as we move forwards. The two meter temperature data tables for Manchester, maximums across the top, a similar trend to London, likewise with minimums, there is more blue there in the daytime maximum, so a chance here in the northern half of the UK in particular that on some days early on, temperatures will be staying at or below freezing point. So ice days are more likely here. Up to Glasgow, similar trends. But if we look at the ensemble mean, the thick purple line there, it's staying below the thick black line for longer. And that suggests that more runs are keeping this part of the UK under the colder air mass as we go through the second week, as, as I say, would be expected because it's coming down from the north. The milder conditions are struggling to return here. Snow row values are higher and they stay higher, even towards the end there, they're around 10. The maximum value they can take is 33. So a good chance of significant amounts of snow, I would suggest, in the northern half of the UK for the second week. A lower chance in the south, not to be discounted though. Here's the two meter, temp uh, two meter, data, two meter temperature data table for Glasgow. Similar pattern, although there's more blue than on the Manchester one and a lot more than on the London one there in terms of daytime maximums. Later on there, the amount of light green starts to in increase. It's supposed to runs going for six to 10 Celsius daytime maxes. So an indication here that by the very end, that milder air could well be reaching the north, but it's less certain. I thought it would be worth just having a look at the uh, 850 HPA uh, temperature data tables. They show the number of runs which have fallen into different categories. Purple indicates cold. The number in brackets is the percentage of runs which are going very cold on a given day. And what we can see here on the London data table is that from Monday the 15th through to Friday the 19th, over 50% are in that purple bucket, so cold. But it's notable that not many are going very cold. The maximum there, I think, is 13% on Tuesday the 16th. Of course, it doesn't have to be very cold at this level for snow to fall, but it does help. Looking at the comparable data table from the European ECM model, it's a similar story. A high percentage have fallen into the purple, uh, category, but very few are going into the bracketed one, which would indicate runs dipping below minus 10 Celsius at this level. The trend here is similar with the amount of purple decreasing later. The Glasgow uh, data table from the GEFS follows a similar pattern, but there's a lot more purple in there. Also notice that the numbers in brackets are higher, 42% on Monday the 15th, 42% going for very cold air. That starts to decrease later on, but it's looking good for snow in this part of the UK at least. The ECM table for Glasgow tells a similar story. You can see there on Monday the 15th, the column is completely purple. Solid agreement for cold conditions. Now here's a data table I've not shown before. The reason is that it's generated using a new feature on the weatheroutlook.com website. 
the GEFS tracker. And this particular table is showing the number of runs on successive updates, which are forecasting temperatures at the 850 HPA level to dip to or below minus 10 Celsius between days 9 and 16 in the London area. That's quite a mouthful, but I think I've explained it correctly. Is there a trend showing? Well, the latest update is at the top, there were 10 runs meeting that criteria. And as we go backwards through time, the last few days, the number varies a little bit. The minimum is 9, I think the maximum is 15. There isn't really a clear trend though at this point, but I think it's definitely worth watching this in the coming days to see how it develops. Also worth looking at are the postage stamp plots from the Mogreps G Ensemble, the UK Met Office one on the left and the ECM one on the right. The ECM Ensemble has a lot more runs in it, which is why the chart looks very squashed. But if you have a login to the weatheroutlook.com website, you can view the full-sized version of it. But the, the takeout here is that on Wednesday the 17th of January, Nine of the 17 runs in Mogreps G have 850 HPA temperatures above minus 5 Celsius in, in at least parts of southern Britain. The ECM have 26 out of 51 reaching that same level. So if this is a period when there is quite a lot of uncertainty about whether it's going to be cold enough for snow in the south or not. It's more clear-cut as you head northwards across the UK and Scotland. Virtually all of the runs on both of these ensemble models are meeting or exceeding that threshold. Uncertainty in the south. There is the potential for significant snowfall, but also it could be wet rather than white. Here's the mean surface level pressure data table from the GEFS for York. To begin with, low pressure, lower than average pressure really appears to be dominant with probably high pressure to the west, the northwest of the UK as I've been discussing. As we go through week two, it's quite an uncertain picture. The amount of higher pressure runs increases, but also there are some runs developing really deep areas of low pressure. So perhaps the, the high pressure perhaps sinking southwards at this point, but it's very, very uncertain. Well, to summarise week one, mostly dry early on with patchy nighttime frosts and chilly days. Although temperatures will be edging upwards a little bit, probably still remaining a tad below the average. Also, there is a chance of some light, showery rain moving down from the north, but amounts won't be great. However, as we go towards the end of the week, much colder Arctic air begins to sweep southwards. The risk of snow showers increases in the north and the east. But will that cold air make it all the way down to southern counties or not? It's an uncertain picture, and as we go into week two, there is a chance of heavier outbreaks of rain, sleet, and snow moving across parts of the UK. They would be pushing it from the south to southwest. Significant snow is possible. There could be some disruption. It's very uncertain, though, as I'm emphasizing. That's most likely to occur in areas north of London. Then it could well be cold in all parts of the UK for several days as an area of low pressure pulls away. Towards the end of the second week, though, the signal is for temperatures to begin rising. So perhaps turning milder, at least that's what the computer models are suggesting at this point. In turn, rain becomes more likely than snow. The, the chance of snow may start to migrate northwards and really just become focused on Scotland. So, uh, there we have it. I think if I had to choose two words to summarise the outlook, they would probably be wintry and uncertain. Lots of you probably won't like that second choice, but it is what it is, and the computer model data simply is not definitive enough to draw firm conclusions about the extent and risk of snow in particular 
towards the end of the first week and through the second. But what can be said is that the chance of cold conditions becoming established is greater in the northern half of the UK than it is in the southern half. Therefore, that's where the risk of snow is likely to be the greatest. More chance of snow turning back to rain in southern and central counties, at least at times. Also, as we approach the end of the forecast period, there is that signal for milder conditions to begin returning more generally. But lots of water under the bridge or maybe snow to fall before that happens. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. It's a very difficult one to put together today. Remember, of course, to hit the like button if you did and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Also, keep up to date with the day-to-day -day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. So, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again shortly. Bye now.